Uh, so we're going to start uh, with logistics. That's what we're looking at today. Um, we're just going to have a look at some of the other ships that you might find. Uh, we're going to be using bursts today as our frig logi. Uh, you can also find. You can also find yourself flying other things. Uh, so here on the uh, on the on the left hand side, we've got our bursts that we're going to be flying today. Uh, so they're mostly full of cap recharges at the moment because, uh, well, they're not actually that that good. They need tech two tech two versions of these. Uh, so that's what we're going to be running. So we've got uh, cap power relays in the lows, micro warp drive in the mid, more cap recharges, and then remote shield boosters, and then most capacitor control circuits in the in the rig slots so we are completely cap stable uh, you could also do the same thing with an incursus with the armor version so got the same thing it's cap stable as well and I also give out some scythes uh, some of you have been given scythes uh, and this is the bit on the sides it's pretty much the same but this has actually got a tank on the side uh, whereas on the bursts it has no tank whatsoever uh, so it doesn't die as easy. Uh, the bursts are actually quite hard to kill even though they've got no tank because they are a frigate and they are basically uh, quite hard to, uh, hard to hit. Uh, and then we've got the armor version here, the Excura armor version of the Scythe. Uh, both of these are AB fit. I don't know why I've put them AB fit but they are AB fit. Um, so this would be really good in like a, a small armor uh, armor afterburner gang if you were doing that sort of thing so we've got a bit of platage a bit of nano membrane explosive hardener some cat power relays afterburner some cat rechargers and then the remote armor repairers and then rig slots ccc trimarks in the lows uh, now if you are pro oh, if you're pro then you would also have armor uh, remote bots as your drones so you can also use these to help rep your fleet uh, especially on the shield fleets uh, it's always nice to carry armor and hull maintenance box with you uh, when you're in shield fleets so then if uh, light tackle uh, gets any armor or hull damage you can rep them up when you're not fighting uh, it's always handy to have with you uh, you could also have um, the tech 2 versions of all these things Oh, somebody's trying to... There you go, little buddy. You can have one of those. Uh, so you could also have the Tech 2 versions of these ships uh, that we've got here as well. So we've got a, a scimitar, uh, which is basically the same thing as the Sky, it's just the Tech 2 version. Uh, and you can generally fit it out much better. So we've got all Tech 2 mods and bigger tank and more cap stability and things like that and a lot more range. That's the main bonus on these. You get a lot more range on the uh, on the on the wrappers. So this one is going to do. Oh no, it's not obviously getting any bonuses. Uh, this will do uh, uh, 70 odd k uh, when you are undocked. It will show 70 k. Must be a bug, but it's not showing up there. Uh, so you get a lot of range. They are very hard to hit. They all have a lot of tank uh, compared to the technical versions. Um, so this is an MWD fit as opposed to the AB fits uh, of the scythes that I've handed out. Uh, so this is a very good ship for roaming uh, roaming fleets. It's one of the most, probably one of the most used lodges in the game at the moment, uh, the scimitar. Uh, you could also have a basilisk. Uh, I haven't got a basilisk here, uh, but the basilisk uh, version of this is also very, very good. Uh, but you have to do a cap chain uh, to make it work, which is a bit annoying in some situations. Uh, but I'm sure, uh, I think it's worm holders, they use them quite a lot. I'm sure a lot of low set groups will use the basilisk, the basilisk version of this ship, uh, which is the Kaldari version of the logistics. Uh, what we've also got is we've got the Oneros, which is another tattoo version of the ship. Uh, so this is what we call a dual, a dual prop ship. 
Uh, so we have got uh, an afterburner and we've got a macro warp drive uh, fitted to this. So it makes it very, very versatile in a lot of situations. Uh, so you get all the bonus bonuses of uh, it having a really, really small sig with the afterburner running. Uh, but then when your FC warps you to zero on a bunch of CVA battleships, uh, then you are able to uh, turn your macro warp drive on and run away very, very quickly because CVA uh, hate logistics and they will kill you. Uh, so this is very good if your FC is terrible like I don't know, headliner for instance uh, this is this is this is what you need this is definitely what you need in one of those types of fleas uh, but again it has a, a lot of tank uh, tech 2 resists all the weapons and everything like that um, uh, the problem that you have with uh, dual uh, dual propping them uh, and just MWD lodges in general is they end up being not very cap stable uh, so to get around this we have got a cap booster on this ship uh, with cap booster charges uh, so we can keep boosting during a fight so we don't run out of cap it's very very important uh, the scimitar can get away with it it can't it can't rep permanently uh, in this fit that I've got here this is like a coward fit uh, but it, it does very very well and it's very 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 fast so it, it it can uh, mitigate the damage quite well by just running away and using its uh, range bonus on its reppers. Uh, you can also have uh, Tech 3 uh, Tech three Logistics. I haven't got one of those either. Uh, but you can do Tech 3 Logistics. Uh, they are very, very good. Uh, not used really that often on the live server. They're mostly used in tournament setups and stuff like that. Um, they, they are very, very powerful. Uh, but they don't have very much range, which is uh, why most people don't actually use them. Uh, but in tournaments, they, they are awesome. Uh, and then you could go to the, the, the Mega Extreme, uh, and you could uh, you could fly something like this. This is like end game logistics ship, I suppose. So we've got a triage carrier here, uh, relatively pimp. Uh, but this is like an end game logistics ship uh, that you can use in very large scale fights. Uh, the problem with them is um, they die very, very easily if you go against battleships or dreads or any sort of a capital ship. So you have to be careful with where you drop them, uh, which is why just using normal logistics is normally the best option for most uh, fights in EVE. Uh, uh, so when you're fitting all these ships, we'll go back to the scythe. Oh no, we'll go, we'll, we'll go to the uh, we'll go to the burst. We'll go here. Uh, so when you're trying to fit your ship, the most important thing is having reppers on there. Uh, so if it has three slots for uh, uh, sl three high slots for reps, then you put three slot uh, three reps in there. If it's got four, you have four, and so on and so forth. You wouldn't have uh, empty slots or offline mods or anything like that on, on a logistics ship. Always have all the mods, uh, all the uh, remote weapons uh, active so you can use them at all times. You won't put like a hog gun on any, uh, or anything like that. A, a lot of people do this, uh, but it is very, very distracting uh, <laughs> trying to do two things at once, trying to DPS and trying to rep people. And do normally end up shooting your own teammates, so you definitely don't want to have uh, hog guns on your ships. Uh, if you're a logistics, just be a logistics. Uh, you a can carry one. a Give drone. Hard, a a little drone here, a little warrior. Uh, so this little warrior here, uh, you could use for uh, getting some damage on a target. So you will appear on kill mails. I'm sure CCP eventually in another 10 years might fix this, so logists don't need to do this. But uh, you could just use a drone. Obviously on this frigate you only get one drone, but on the bigger ships you get more and more, uh, more and more drones. If you want to be super elite uh, with your uh, with your uh, with your drones, and you could just have like uh, uh, five warriors, and then we've got a whole red bots with this one. Uh, so, we'll go over here. so on this one, we've got we've got some armor and whole red bots, and then three warriors just for just for putting on a target, so we get on some kill mails during the fight. Uh, but really, most of the time in a lodge, your main priority wouldn't be to try and rep things. Uh, you just want to rep your members of your team. 
So you guys, here's the deal. They got their prophecy fleet up, and then Razor also has an oracle fleet. So we should have some now, interesting stuff about to happen. Oh, is it still running so on an oracle? Like It's not my channel, somebody else will have to do it. <laughs> uh, so, what we're going to talk about next. Oh, right, and yeah, fleet broadcasts is another important thing. Uh, so, we've got our fleet here, fleet window, that we've got here. Uh, now, you always want to have it on history, and you always want to have it on broadcast history. Now, join a fleet, loads of, loads of things will get spammed into, uh, oh, I can't actually tap anything, so I'm in, I'm in fleet, uh, but loads of things will spam up in here, warp into, align to, uh, armor broadcasts and things like that, uh, and that be can become very, very distracting, so what you can do, if you go to the little top left hand corner of your fleet window, uh, and click it, and then go down to uh, broadcast settings, which we've got here, and click on that uh, and then we can turn on and off different broadcast uh, uh, different types of broadcasts uh, and a new little feature that uh, CCP has give us is you can now color code your broadcasts to different things uh, so let's say you were a, a logi in a fleet then you wouldn't really want targets uh, being broadcast on your main window so you could just turn that off you could just see other ones so if you haven't got any Get remote cap uh, capacitor transfers, you can just turn that off so you don't get spammed. Uh, now, normally in fleets, y even if you're in like a shield fleet, you want you definitely want both the armor and shield uh, broadcasts turned on. Um, mainly because people in mad panic will just randomly cl click any button down here uh, and they might not hit the right one, so you definitely want to be able to see them. Uh, and also in large fleet fights uh, where you are being bombed, uh, generally what you do is if you are in a shield ship and you are getting bombed and you want to be repped up, uh, instead of broadcasting for shield in that type of fleet you would broadcast for armour. So then the logistics can prioritise who they're going to rep and they can see, oh no he just needs armour, it's not a priority, he's not getting primaried so we'll rip him in a bit and they can just concentrate on the shield broadcasts and vice versa for armor so if you're in an armor fleet you would uh, and you got bombed and you needed repping up uh, but you weren't a primary you could click need shield and then the logistics would know uh, what uh, what what you what you need basically uh, so uh, the scythe fit, fit yeah you can have the scythe fit if you want There's the scythe fit. Uh, but yeah, broadcasts, they are very, very important. You want this window, uh, when we're on dot, when we're on dot, I'll show you again. But uh, you want this uh, relatively close to where your targets are going to appear. So when you're on dot, you've got your overview in the top right hand corner, and then your targets uh, lock up against the top of the screen, or unless you move them somewhere else. By default, they'll be on the top right hand side. Uh, so, so you're not moving around all over the screen with your mouse, just to make it easier. You want this quite high up and quite close to where your lock targets are. So then you can just move back and forward really, really quickly and lock and move and change targets and unlock them and stuff like that. Uh, if you've got it like down over in the right hand side, you're having to move from left to right, top to bottom all the time, and it becomes uh, very inefficient. So that's a nice little tip. Uh, another little tip that you can do, especially if you're in, in, in large fleet fights, uh, where you know you're going to be up against damps and things like that, is, is you can have this window open at all times, and this is an active window. So if anything changes on your ship, it automatically changes it in this window at the same time. Uh, so an important one here is we've got targeting range. So we can get rid of all these other things here. Get rid of this. So we've just got the targeting one uh, open here. Uh, so what you can do in a large fleet fight is you can move this window down over into a corner somewhere so you can just see uh, how far your targeting range is. Uh, 
So then during a fleet fight, you don't have to mess around opening a window or anything. You could just look quickly down into the wherever, you, uh, whichever corner you've put it in, preferably on the left hand side because it's tucks in nice and neat there. And then you could just quickly see if you're damped and what range you've got, and then you can uh, tell whoever the logistics FT is to bring you closer or whatever like that uh, or if you are manually piloting then you would be able to manually pilot closer to who you need to rep because you'd be damned that's a nice little tip uh, that I got off Blast X it's the probably the only thing I ever learned off him but it's a good tip yep but it's a, it is a good tip though so you should always do that if you're getting uh, if you know you're gonna get damped and stuff like that it's a very nice little window to have open uh, so what we'll do is we'll we'll uh, everybody can undock. I'm just gonna go in a. Uh, I'll go in. A, I'll go in a burst for now. I'll probably get killed or something by some random PL guy. But uh, what we can do is we can all undock uh, and and we'll sort out uh, how you would uh, 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 anchor and battlefield positioning and stuff like that. And then we'll have a look at how to rep capacity management and then any questions anybody might have. Uh, so everybody in the fleet can undock if you if you're in a logistic ship or if you're not, it doesn't make any difference. So now we're undocked, I, I can uh, lock some targets up. It's uh, Taffet's fleet in the fleet finder. Uh, so yeah, so when you are locking targets up. Once you're on dot, you can just stay on the on dot for now. Uh, once you've locked targets up, so they all appear on this top right hand side. So you definitely want this relatively close. And so I don't have it really, really high up. Uh, what I do is I have it uh, stacked so you can double stack these because you can just drag these around and create different columns, uh, which is nice. So like if you've got uh, like an FC or something or a really important person locked up you can just slide him down onto a second row uh, so then when you are locking and unlocking these really really quickly uh, it won't make any difference because uh, you're not going to unlock the really really important guy uh, and obviously with the fleet window open and everybody on dot then you can also see uh, people broadcasting for shield So you're able to lock these up now. What can be really, really, yeah, uh, I'm getting bumped all over. Uh, what can be really, really useful for this uh, is uh, you see a lot of people like streaming and stuff like that, and not being very efficient on how to lock and unlock. Uh, now there are key shortcuts uh, that you can change in your settings window. Uh, to be able to uh, lock and unlock targets really really quickly so the default for locking is holding control and then left clicking on on, on something like in the in the, out in space or in the broadcast window uh, so we can just left click uh, we can hold control left click on the item and it will lock it up or we can do it out in space as well uh, and another quick thing to unlock people uh, is to hold control shift and click them on your on your targeting window and it will unlock them all, so you can quickly lock and unlock the targets super, super quickly. And obviously, we've always got this one down here because it's super important because we want to rep that because uh, we don't want people uh, destroying our services. Uh, now, most of the time in in large scale combat you would anchor on your fc so i will be the logic fc uh, so usually in large fights you would have a separate channel um for all log logistics to be in in game um so you can all communicate with each other uh, so you would have uh so people could uh, work out who's oh, I'm getting shot at by administrator nice one uh, so you could work out who's going to be FC and deliberate who's who's going to do what uh, now normally if you see A's in fleet it's usually for an anchor uh, so it's either be the main fleet anchor or the logistics anchor depending on what channel they're in uh, so depending on what type of fleet you're in would depend on whether you're going to orbit or anchor um, most of the time most people just 
anchor uh, by approaching uh, so you could just right click on something and just click approach and it will start approaching whatever that might be uh, now if you are in an AB fit ships this is MWD all the bursts are MWD uh, so in, if you're in an MB, AB fit ship you would just continuously basically keep the AB running um, at all times uh, when you're in a macro warp drive fit then it all depends on who you're flying with and what the other ships are in the fleet uh, it might just be that you just perma run the MWD as well uh, but it might be that the Logi FC tells you to turn the MWD on and off depending on uh, uh, what you're doing or anything like that. Uh, now most of the Logis, uh, these bursts and everything are all uh, completely cap stable so you can run everything all at the same time uh, so that won't be an issue but as soon as you start building up to Tech 2 ships uh, you can't generally just perma run all the mods uh, so you have to be very uh, very careful with the capacity that you've got uh, so what we can do is we can have everybody can just uh, click approach on me uh, so normally when you're in a fleet what you can do is you can have a watch list uh, for, for really really important people so we'll just uh, we'll just pick you you can be my watch list guy uh, so we've got you as my watch list guy so we're gonna say that you're the anchor uh, so we can just uh, right click on you in the watch list and uh, and, and approach you or over you or do whatever you need to do uh, now this is really good for uh, for seeing uh, really really important people because you can have a bunch of people uh, 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 you can see the stats of the ship now they added a new feature so you can just drag people in which is nice and cool so it's just super quick uh, or you could do it from the fleet window you could just drag people from over here and just go yeah boom, you, you're, you're important uh, so we could keep an eye on you now uh, <laughs> being in somebody's watch list doesn't actually guarantee that you're not going to die in a fleet because um, the logistics usually have a lot of things going on so uh, just because somebody's watch listed you yeah, don't mean that you could just YOLO about um, but yeah it, it does help looking for important people or if you've got somebody as an anchor you can just quickly approach on the anchor or uh, scouts or something like that you can have them in this window as well uh, usually you'd have your FC and your main anchor locked uh, as soon as you land on grid and then you can move them down onto your second grid so you can always keep them locked so then you know uh, like distances and stuff like that now logistics anchoring it can be very complicated normally when you're logistics anchoring you've got a lot of things looking out for so that's a bit more of a complicated thing but usually you'd have two or three targets locked in in your bottom row down here so you can keep range on them uh, so you don't go out of range of the main fleet uh, but basically when you're logistics anchoring you're having to look around the entire time anyway so uh, it starts getting a bit complicated on very large fights when you've got multiple fleets to fight uh, now capacitor management now these things will cap out relatively quick uh, not this fit but like normal lodges you can't run all your reps all, uh, all at the same time let's turn them all on uh, so when you're repping somebody uh, if you see them taking damage uh, and the red bar uh, 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 the light of we're in a shield fleet so if the shield is going down quite quickly then obviously you want to turn all your reps on now to conserve cap if you start seeing it go up in big jumps or the uh, the shield or armor or whatever you're repping is completely full don't just keep your reps running indefinitely because you'll eventually cap out uh, just try and look after uh, uh, look after your cap going to save this guy it's all right uh, so yeah uh, so you need to always look out for your cap uh, now these frigates these bursts are really really easy to fly because they're just permanent cap run stable all the time so you can just MWD about and, uh, and rep at the same time so it's no big deal but as soon as you start looking at the cruiser sized vessels or if you change this fit slightly um, uh, uh, then you definitely want to uh, uh, be on it with your cap and don't just keep blindly repping people when there's uh, uh, when they don't when they're not taking damage or anything like that. 
Uh, somebody was damping me, I was just about to show that this uh, this little window here changes when uh, we get damped, but I guess we'll damp this and uh, so, uh, so yeah, so we've got our watch list uh, that we have set up for our FCs or important squishy things. Uh, it means we can just uh, right click and approach on our anchors or stuff like that. Uh, we've got our broadcast settings that we can set up and give different colours so they look all cool when people broadcast for different things. Let's see if people have been broadcasting for random things. No, they haven't. Uh, so you can have those set up uh, and then you want this like reasonably close to the top uh, so you don't end up uh, having to move all over the uh, window with your mouse pointer to be able to lock and uh, lock things. Uh, in the broadcast settings window, or in the in the, in your fleet window, uh, there's like four bars that are all in the top left hand corner where it says fleet. Uh, if you click on that and then click on uh, broadcast settings and then it opens the box up uh, and then you can change all your broadcast settings. So you just go up to the top corner, broadcast settings and it's there. You can turn things on and off and change colours and do stuff like that. If you fly multiple ships all the time then you'll have to keep coming in this every fleet and turning like armor broadcasts off and, and targets on and so you have to keep on it a little bit uh, when you're joining different fleets but it, it is very nice for large fleets to just be able to turn things on and off. Uh, it does save a lot of time trying to search through hundreds and hundreds of broadcasts uh, but obviously the colours do help a lot, uh, but just turning them off does save you a little bit of time having to scroll through and find people. Yep. Uh, but yeah, most of the time it is just uh, warping around, following the main FC uh, and anchoring on a logistics anchor just by basically uh, clicking on uh, clicking on the name and the watch list if you've got them in the watch list and then clicking on approach or you could orbit on them depending on uh, what type of fleet you're in it all depends on what ships you're in uh, whether you're going to do which one you're going to do most of the time most people just approach now because uh, it's just slightly easier um, Oh, right in, yep, shield and armor reps. Uh, so, shield reps rep your shield and armor rep your armor. Uh, now, the main difference between the two of them is shield is almost instantaneously. So, uh, so if you lock somebody up and then apply a rep to them, it's out of range, oh no, it isn't. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you apply a rep to them. As soon as the cycle starts, uh, pretty much he gets the, the boost from the shield booster. Uh, now the difference uh, with armor is armor gets the boost to the ship after the cycle completes. So if you've got a cycle time of five seconds uh, on an armor repairer, for instance, uh, then it would be five seconds after clicking the online button on the mod that he would get the benefit. So you have to look out for that. Um, when you're in, fly, uh, in in large fights because you might lock him and he might be in full shield uh, and then you click armor reps and then he just disappears and he can die before the uh, reps uh, actually activate uh, so shield ships are a little bit better than that uh, now the bigger the, the, the mods you get a slightly uh, slight delay on them so like on capital size reps you get up to a two and a half second delay from clicking the button to it actually getting on the person but small and medium and large reps are generally very very fast uh, unless you're in a massive thousand man fleet in which case everything is going to be slowed down anyway so you get a little bit more time to be able to put the reps on in the first place. Uh, now a lot of the time uh, in a lot of fights it all comes down to people being able to click the broadcast button um, as quickly as possible so I haven't got that, let me just get an overview with people on it. Uh, so if you've got uh, an overview, this will be filled with enemies. If you start seeing loads and loads and loads of people, uh, what we call yellow boxing you. So as you can see around here, we've got people uh, 
yellow boxing me at the moment, so it means they are locking me up. Uh, so if you're in a fleet fight and the and the enemies are doing that, then you probably definitely want to just click the shield or armor broadcasts, depending on what ship uh, ship you're in, because uh, it means you're probably going to get shot next. Uh, obviously, when you are being shot that will turn to red so you can see uh, by what percentage uh, the proportion of sheet of fleet is shooting at you uh, but yeah if you're being yellow boxed uh, by anything that's like basically not your fleet not your team uh, then you definitely want to be uh, broadcasting for your shields or, or, or armor uh, very very quickly uh, that scales up, obviously small little tiny gangs you get a little bit more time to be able to broadcast uh, for the logistics to get reps on people or for you to be repped. Uh, but the larger the fleets that you're fighting you definitely need to be super super quick on that. Uh, you can also bind these to um, uh, keybinds as well so you could set them like a, like a control Z or something like that. Uh, so if you could clip control Z it automatically broadcasts for a shield for instance uh, so the logistics could uh, uh, help you quicker also if you are in a logistics ship you can more likely to save somebody's life uh, so at the minute I was just getting damped and that was just changing I was just, just seeing that it went down to 25 kilometer, kilometers down here it's gone back up to 45 but unfortunately it's turned it back off again so I couldn't really show you but yeah this is a nice little uh, a nice little trick having the range on here we go and it's changed to 12 kilometers now automatically uh, because I am being damped uh, by Whoever is damping me, I can't really tell. Oh, it's probably you, the Maulus. Uh, so I think that's about it. Uh, now, uh, overload, uh, you don't really... Oh, oh you're overloading the damp, uh, never mind. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't generally overload the reps on a logistics ship. It would only be exceptional circumstance uh, where you would overload your reps on a logistics ship itself. Um, because most fights last longer than 35 seconds uh, so if you overload right from the start then you might not be able to overload later on uh, so it's all dependent on what's going on usually the Logi FC will tell you to overload if he doesn't and you think you might just be able to break him then you can use your own uh, your own dial to work out whether you need to overload your reps and stuff, but generally you don't need to unless the Logi FC specifically tells you you need to overload. Uh, now another thing is, so now I've just MWD'd off here. Uh, so this is one thing that can happen quite often. You have to always pay attention to where your logic anchor is if you are anchoring on somebody, because uh, you could very very quickly find yourself. 50, 60, 70 kilometers away from your main anchor, uh, which probably means you're out of rep range of uh, the rest of your lodges, or you won't be able to rep your fleet, so your fleet dies and then you die. So uh, if you are anchoring on people, you do have to semi pay attention uh, to what's going on because you can end up uh, getting dragged miles behind and then you might die, or your fleet might die as a consequence of that. So you do have to semi keep uh, attention to that the way the, the reason why we do the logi anchoring is so then as a logistic ship you have to do the minimal amount of stuff all you need to do is to look at your broadcast window uh, lock them uh, and then rep them and then unlock them and then rep the next target um, uh, we generally try and keep it as easy as we can so then you are more likely to be able to rep more targets and then save your friend uh, fleet mates so then you're more likely to win fights and stuff like that. Any uh, any questions? I haven't really been reading chat or anything but I haven't really been paying that much attention to, uh, to the fleet chat uh, on the blog. Uh, say it again. Never stagger reps. No. All your reps on one target. If you stagger your reps, then both targets usually die. Basically. Oh, you mean in, in terms of uh, for cap stability, you mean? 
Not not splitting your reps. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Not over repping. Yeah, yeah. So uh, generally, what I do is when I lock a target. Um, if it's it depends on on the size of the fleet fight, but I generally lock a target, uh, and then I will put all my reps on them for one cycle. Uh, it's a bit out of range for me, uh, but I'd put all my reps on him for one cycle, and then I'd probably turn two of them off for the second cycle, and then look. And then if he's still taking loads and loads of damage, I might turn one of them back on or both of them back on. Uh, but I generally don't do more than one cycle with all three reps running. I drop it down to one and then might go back up to two or three, or depending on how many you've got. Or um, or you might find that it just needed just one cycle from everybody in the fleet and that's, that's, that's him saved. Um, now, when I'm in a ship that has four reppers, it's only got three, when I have four reppers, I usually split them into two stacks on my keyboard so I can activate uh, like F1 and F2 and F3 and F4 at the same time because uh, you can obviously, four fingers, you can activate them really quickly uh, just on your F keys. Uh, so I'd usually group them uh, long range and short range reps. Uh, so it all depends on a lot of things, but I'd, if I've got four reps, I'll probably only put two on a target if if I know that we're not taking that much damage uh, from the enemy. Uh, and if the enemy comes closer and we start increasing the damage, then I might put more on. Um, and I might save uh, some ships, they will have three large uh, on like a big logistics ship. They might have three large and a medium, for instance. So I might have all three of my reps. Uh, my, my main three reps for repping the primary uh, and then I might have a random dictator or something locked up and I will keep him alive with my medium rep uh, so he has always basically got reps on him I know I said you shouldn't s split reps but uh, when you've got larges and mediums split they're, they're different distances so it generally doesn't work anyway so you have to you have to slightly split, split them up a little bit uh, and then if a uh, main primary target is getting really hammered then I'll turn the rep off the dicta and put them all on the main target uh, and let the dicta die because that's what they are good at. Uh, but yeah, I, I never usually do more than a couple, uh, one or two cycles on each reps uh, generally during fights. Do you use capacitor transfers with your lodges? Guardians? Uh, yep, you can use guardians and basilisks um, not a lot of people use them that often it's usually in very very small gang stuff uh, the problem with the uh, the cap uh, the cap chaining uh, logistics ships is as soon as you start losing uh, uh, logistics ships very very quickly in a flight uh, in a fight especially in the beginning when you're getting blapped off the field you might have to rearrange your chain every 15, 20, 30 seconds and that becomes a bit of an issue um, and it puts everybody in the logistics wing off and then you lose even more targets because you're not paying attention because you readjusted chains and stuff like that so generally um, most people just try and stay away from those types of fits unless it's a very spe specific small gang situation but they are very very powerful because you usually on those types of ships you run four large reps and then two remote capacitor transfers so you're completely cap stable with everything running uh, and you've got full range and full rep power but it can become a bit of an issue if you start getting losing logistics very quickly if the logistics anchor is damped how do they stay on the FC if they lose lock uh, the, uh, if the logistics anchor gets uh, damped out uh, like heavily it, it will just usually just turn on his overlay like so uh, so now you can work out how far away you are from the rest of your fleet just by using your overlay like this uh, which is a nice little tool when you are being a logistics anchor uh, most of the time normal logistics don't need to use this because they should just be following the anchor and he should be doing a good job and if he isn't doing a good job, then you tell him off. Uh, but yeah, if, if, you, if you were completely damped out, uh, hopefully everybody else in the logistics wing isn't also screaming that they're damped out, they're damped out. Uh, in which case, you could probably just stay quite far away. If everybody starts screaming, oh, I'm damped FC, I'm damped FC, then the logistics anchor could go closer and he could use his, uh, 
is uh, targeting uh, thing here, whatever this is called. I forgot what it is. Tactical overlay, that's it. Uh, it could use a tactical overlay to gauge how far away people are. Uh, and it could just, um, uh, it could just like click on one of the ships from the bulk of his uh, fleet and it would automatically show him in the top right hand corner in the selective item how far away it is. So that's a nice little trick as well. Uh, let's see, more questions. Uh, yeah, if, if, if the logistics anchor, you would just have him on the watch list. So you generally uh, have your uh, uh, logistics FC uh, or the logistics anchor at the top. Then below that, you might have the main logistic, uh, the main anchor or the main FC, and then subsequent FCs or subsequent. Uh, anchors or stuff like that below them and then you could have squishy people below that so you can order this and you get on the watch list you can move them around super easy you just drag them around and then if you want to add more people you can drag uh, you could drag the name into the watch list and I think you can also you can also do it from the from the fleet window as well any basically any name you can drag in there uh, I don't know if it works to take them out though let me have a look no you can't take them out though you have to right click them uh, now, what you definitely don't want to do, I see this a lot on streaming, is you don't want to be unlocking and unlocking people like this. No, I was just demonstrating something on the stream. Uh, I can't talk at the same time. Uh, so yeah, you definitely don't want to be uh, clicking these buttons down here. You definitely don't really want to be right-clicking and locking targets on the on the fleet windows and the overviews and stuff like that. Uh, just always control left click with your mouse. It's just super super quick, uh, super super uh, super super uh, simple. Uh, and then when you come to unlock them again, uh, you can just use control click uh, to unlock them. It's usually the quickest way. You can also use the radio menu. The radio menu is pretty cool for some things like docking and stuff like that. Uh, but so you could use the radio menu for locking. Oh no, you can't. Not from. Uh, no, uh, oh yeah, 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 it has to be on the ship. You can do it from the watch list though. So you can lock things from from the radio menu, which is actually quite good for some things. Uh, probably not as quick as just control clicking. On something to lock something. It's always always control click or shift control to unlock things. It's uh, how do Logi cap channels in game and on subs for Logi on Mumble work? Uh, so usually on Mumble, it's usually easy because you'd all be on in a sub channel, uh, so it'd usually be called sub one. Oh, you scared? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, so uh, somebody's gonna come and kill us. Uh, so everybody should anchor up on me, and we are going to yolo around. Uh, and we're going to try and not get killed. We're going to try and rep people. So everybody should have their MWDs on to start with. Uh, if you're in a scythe, um, YOLO, uh, you got it for free anyway. I'll give you some more if you die later on, because uh, I've still got some in the in the in the uh, in the station. Um, uh, so yeah, if you if you're a logi in, let's just move over here. Uh, so if you're a logi, you'd usually be in a channel called Sub1 on Mumble, so everybody can communicate in there, and you can set up a whisper key, uh, uh, to, so you can talk to just people in there. Uh, if you were setting up cap chains in-game, uh, then you would generally have a separate channel to be able to do that, uh, and the Logi FC it would tell you to cap chain up, cap chain down, if you want to have both up, both down, one up, one down, it all depends on what type of ships you're flying and how many there are of you. Uh, but you would just have a dedicated channel for doing that on in game. Um, usually, uh, you'd have a channel at the alliance level uh, that would uh, everybody could join to do that sort of stuff. 
Uh, but yeah, you should. Everybody should approach. Uh, so you just uh, if you have me on your watch list by uh, right clicking and then go to fleet and then add to watch list, and then I should put appear on the watch list and then you could just click approach. I'll just slow down a bit because I am probably a much faster than all of you. Uh, so I'll slow down. Uh, have your MWDs on and stuff like that. And we're just going to yolo around. Hopefully these hostiles will come to the station and we can uh, we can go and rep them. That will confuse them. Uh, when the anchor is webbed down, what should I do? Uh, nothing. Uh, the FC anchor will inform the main fleet FC that they are webbed and they can't get closer. If it's super bad and he definitely can't get close, then he might assign somebody else to be the anchor uh, temporarily. Um, so then everybody else could anchor on a different person uh, and then change back later. Probably not though. If the uh, if the Logi FC has been found out, it'll probably die pretty soon. So yeah, you just you just you, somebody else would be the anchor f uh, temporarily or permanently for the rest of the fleet if you get if you get anchored if you get webbed out. Winging. Any more questions? Uh, cap channels. Uh, well, uh, well, actually, I can show you one because this is. Oh, cap chains. Um, cap chains. Uh, I haven't really got a, a, a ship that I could demonstrate that in. Uh, but basically, if you were doing a cap chain, uh, you would have uh, a, a big list of people like we have in fleet. Uh, so let's just say it's this one here because uh, I'm in this one, and you can see the stream. Uh, so we've got this one here. This, uh, this, uh, this might be a cap chain ch channel. Uh, so, uh, so I am here at the bottom of this channel. So let's say we had uh, two remote capacitor transfers on on all of our ships. Uh, I might tell everybody to do two down. So Bernedictus had, had put two on on the guy below him. He'd put two on the below him, and he'd put two below him and two below him. Uh, so you'd always have uh, that person at the top of your watch list uh, so then anytime you warp onto a grid you could just quickly lock that person and then put the cap chain up uh, sometimes oh here we go so we've got weigh in uh, so 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 uh, so now uh, we've got weigh in uh, who's below me so I would cap chain weigh in uh, and weigh in would uh, cap chain with the person at the top of the list because he is at the bottom uh, now, yep. Now, normally, wait, if you are joining a fleet that has already set off, uh, when you when you are uh, <laughs> everybody's joining that channel now. Uh, when you are joining a a, a channel uh, that's already started and everybody's already got all the partners sorted out. If you join it, usually you put uh, plus one, or if you leave the channel, then you could type in uh, minus one. Uh, so then everybody, this channel will then blink when you've got it in your in your list down here. It will then blink, uh, so you can see if people are talking in there. It's quite a, a, a quite a, a quite a good one. Or you could just have it open, uh, so you can see if people are typing. Uh, the problem with cap chains is as soon as you start getting 10, 15, 20, 30 people in here and people are dying continuously if you're losing like a logi every 30 seconds it means every 30 seconds you've got to go to this channel, find you, find those below you and see if it's changed with your watch list and then change it like that uh, so that's where it starts getting a bit complicated which is why a lot of entities don't actually bother using them anymore uh, and as he say uh, so administrators not be getting capped by weighing because he's shit uh, so uh, administrator could type in the channel uh, why he capped me if he still doesn't cap you uh, then what you're probably better off doing is opening a private conversation with him uh, and then shout at him uh, to find out why he's not cap chaining you he might say I'm not in system bro uh, or I'm jammed in which case <laughs> in which case that's another problem with uh, with cap chaining uh, cap chain in logic you can get jammed out or dumped out and stuff like that uh, but normally like things like guardians and stuff like that if you only if you've only got single uh, 
uh, propulsion mod on there, so either an MWD or AB, uh, then you could have an ECM or uh, a, a scan, uh, a sensor booster or something like that on there to limit the chance of you getting damped out or jammed out. Uh, and usually if you've got really good intel then you could find out if you're going to get damped or jammed before you even undock, uh, so you'd be able to change that if necessary. Uh, but yeah, cap chaining is a, a nightmare, it can be an, an absolute nightmare, as soon as you start having like 50 people, uh, you know I mean 30 odd people in a cap chain and then you start fighting and then you lose two quarter, uh, two thirds of your uh, village logistics wing right off the beginning because nobody can break anything so you all die first and you're having to continuously uh, change your cap chain, it, it, that, that's why they're not actually that good at all. So always tell your FC if he wants to do cap chaining, just tell him to uh, to get to get real and get with it and get into the 2015 because we don't use cap chains anymore unless it's a very specific situation. Oh, well, yeah, uh, uh, alliance tournaments and stuff like that. Then then that's a different thing. But in normal fights on 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 the main server on TQ, uh, you're probably not going to need to mess around with cap chaining. Uh, and especially in Pandemic Horde, I don't think we're going to be doing any sort of cap chaining stuff. Um, so it won't matter that much uh, for you. At least for the first year, and after a year, after a year of playing this game, you'll know how to uh, cap chain a little bit better, and you can get a, I'll do you a private one-on-one -on -one, uh, demonstration on how to cap chain. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's, uh, especially if you get a lot of uh, things uh, jamming you, uh, you, you could just tell the FC, can you kill the Guardian, uh, can you kill the E-War wing or whatever, you know what I mean, can you shoot this specific target from the FC and he might say yes a lot of the times, uh, he might say no if it's all on top, but uh, a lot of the times you might just say to broadcast it uh, and then you can broadcast as a target. Uh, now to, if you did want to broadcast as a target, let's just do this uh, just because we can. We're just going to pick on this Scythe guy here. Uh, so we'll just lock him up. Uh, so we can say that this guy here is an evil, evil bad person. Uh, so if you really wanted to uh, broadcast him as a target so the FC, the main FC could kill him, uh, you could click X and then, uh, uh, and then click on him, uh, left click. And it will, uh, and it will broadcast him as a target. So there we go. Broadcasting him. I didn't have my uh, thingies turned on. So, uh, so that's another reason why you don't want. Uh, you definitely want to turn your broadcast targets off because this is just going to get spammed with hundreds of people, and you might just be about to click on him to rep him, and he's just about to die, and then and then somebody else broadcasts a target, and then the list goes down, and then you got to readjust for a second, and then that extra second, and then he dies, and and then it escalates from there. So yeah, you definitely want to turn these off when you're not using them, uh, depending on what type of fleet you're in. S again. Why are you scared from SC Legion? It's a private channel, nobody can enjoy that shit. <laughs> have, you, have, you seen, have you seen my channel? This is the Jew House, you can all join, but I'll kick you all, so don't join it. I'm going to the spy channel. Uh, so, uh, so yeah. Uh, any more questions on, on anything like that? Let's have a look in chat and see if anybody's. Uh, no, you can't put a hog on your logic. Um, ooh, I don't know where... Uh, mm, no. Yeah, it will be 50, it's medium reps, it'll be 52. It'll be 52, I think. I can't tell you about docking, so... Uh, so yeah, per, per, per positioning, we didn't really look at positioning. Uh, so... The Lodge FC will uh, will try and move around. He will always have his target uh, target lock. So let's just say that this guy here and this harpy. 
Oh, it's too far away to lock. Uh, but we're going to say that this guy in the harpy is our main FC, uh, and he's going to be broadcasting targets, and we definitely want to keep him alive. Uh, so what we would do is we would try and keep um, a, a, a reasonable distance away from, from where he is. Uh, but let's say hostiles were towards the sun from where we are now. Let's just get rid of some of these chats. They're annoying. Uh, let's say the, the hostiles were towards the sun then we would try and keep ourselves on the opposite side uh, of our main DPS people um, obviously if you have to keep paying attention to him because it depending on what type of ships are on they can burn away very very quickly and you might be slower than your main D uh, than the main DPS ships uh, so it, the Logi FC might call to turn MWDs on or might say overload for one cycle um, uh, or he might just say uh, a line up with MWDs on so if you're jumping through a gate or something like that um, uh, the Logi FC might say burn down two cycles of MWD he might say burn up, burn towards the sun, burn towards planet one uh, usually in those situations it would be a combination of what the main FC and the Logi FC says uh, but yeah, you would usually try and keep on the opposite side. There are some doctrines where you just literally just follow the main DPS ships. Um, so like these, for instance, these uh, these bursts, uh, they don't have that much range really on the reps. Uh, I mean, they're just below 30, uh, 30 kilometers here. Uh, I think it's like 24, I think it is, or 28. Oh no, I'm mistaken, 28 range, uh, 28. Uh, so you would always try and keep within the, the range of your reps. Um, and if the Logi FC is good, then he will be able to see what he's trying to rep, where the rest of his lodges are, uh, and then try and get close enough to uh, try not to go too fast while still maintaining distance to who he's trying to rep, uh, and also looking at the, at the tail end of his Logi uh, uh, people, uh, so then he can try and work out how far away he needs to be, if he needs to change direction, uh, and things like that. Uh, in small ships like this, where you've only got limited range, you would generally just you, you might uh, burn around. So you, everybody might uh, everybody might orbit or anchor on the same person. Uh, you might not have a specific a uh, logic anchor for those scenarios. Obviously, the bigger ships uh, they get bigger range, so. Tech 1 cruisers have around 52 kilometers range and Tech 2 logistics cruisers with large reps get 72 uh, 72 so it gives you a lot more uh, room for error uh, on being able to burn away from enemies and stuff like that it gives you a lot, uh, a lot bigger operating range uh, obviously the bigger ships uh, the smaller ships they have less range but they are much 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 faster uh, and smaller to, and harder to hit anyway, so it's usually not that much of an issue. Look, being a lot of GFCs is, is not that complicated, but it depends on the size of the fleet and what doctor you're in and stuff like that. Uh, so what we're going to do, if you've got uh, warriors, uh, you can uh, drop your warriors, uh, and everybody's going to uh, everybody's going to lock up this target that I broadcast. Uh, and you're going to put your warrior on him, and we're going to kill him. Uh, and while we're going to kill him, we might keep him alive a little bit. Uh, but we're going to kill him. Just to, just kill the waffle. Uh, so everybody put your little uh, your little drone on the little saber. But well, he's bubbling up. He's probably going to kill us all now, but we'll, we'll, we'll try and we'll try and kill him. He's burning out of range, FC. Uh, so uh, th there are some weird doctrines that you can do uh, where you might have a Logi only fleet and you would use drones to kill uh, your targets and stuff like that. Uh, I don't think we're going to break him, FC. We might need to swap targets. Uh, but they are they are generally rare. Uh, they are very very low DPS. But obviously, if you had a full tank of uh, a full fleet of logistics ships, uh, then. Nobody could really kill you, but you probably couldn't kill anything else as well. 
Uh, yeah, I do use the tactical overlay. I have got it on now, as you can see, the tactical overlay, and you can see all the little lines and stuff like that, and you can see ranges, and you can also hover over your reps or guns or whatever your mod is, and it will have another bubble inside. You've got an outer bubble, which is your lock range, and then uh, the inner bubble is what the range is on the remote rep or the gun or, or and stuff like that. So it's, it's really, really handy for just quickly uh, cycling. Um, I'll slow down a bit. Uh, for just cycling over and you can just see oh shit he's out my range or or is I've got loads of room left or whatever or uh, it's also a nice one if you're getting damp because as soon as you get damp then this bubble will contract and you can instantly see again uh, uh, if you are being damped and what your lock range is and if you are like burning for somebody uh, let's say like a dicta or somebody else has, has got a tackle on something you might be burning towards them if you have your tactile overlay on you can work out very quickly when you can lock them uh, as you're approaching them uh, and then you can work out uh, when you can start applying reps um, it, it's a nice little uh, nice little thing uh, why does the logic sub channel of every alliance have a smug sense of superiority over the main fleet uh, it's because we are superior to the main fleet uh, because the main <laughs> The, the main fleet <laughs> the main fleet doesn't understand without the logic wing they all die and if they annoy us then we just don't rep them and that's that's it it can uh, uh, doing logistics all the time it, it, it can be very very difficult but it's also very very rewarding especially uh, when you're in some big big fights uh, and it's a lot of work, you know what I mean? When you're in a, a normal DPS ship, you just you just lock F1, lock F2, lock F2, lock F1, you know what I mean? It's relatively easy, but when you get into large-scale fights where you're fighting three different fleets at the same time and they're, and they're trying to shoot three different targets and you're trying to coordinate uh, everybody so that everybody gets reps and uh, working out who you're going to let die if you can't hold reps on certain people and stuff like that, it, it, it is very rewarding, it, it's very, very difficult, um, especially subcap logistics. If you, as soon as you start doing triage, I find triage very, very easy if I've been flying uh, subcap logistics for a while, because uh, it's, uh, it's it's definitely much, much easier. There's a lot of things to work uh, that you got to still work out, like cap problems and stuff like that, and changing your fit out, but... Um, but yeah, it, it, it can be very, very demanding in, 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 in bigger fights. But it's very rewarding when you get to the end and you've uh, been able to keep your entire fleets alive. Oh, we've got confessors. Oh. We've got, uh, oh no, he's blue. I should change my overview back. Oh, yeah, we have got confessors. I had the wrong overview. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to burn towards them. It's only intense mercenaries are going to shit themselves. Uh, so everybody just keep anchoring on me. They're going to get really, really confused when they get a whole fleet of logistics uh, uh, coming towards them. So everybody could just anchor on me. We're just going to go towards them and we're, <laughs> we're going to find that they'll probably run away. So that's what we'll do. And I can answer more questions because they're still miles away while, uh, while we're going across. How do you decide who should die? Uh, it depends on uh, a lot of things. Obviously, main FCs and relatively important things like command ships and stuff, then you would generally try not to keep them dying. Uh, but if you've got multiple things being shot at the same time, uh, then you might choose that the... Oh shit, we're going to get absolutely raped here. So everybody could take the everybody should take the fleet walk. We're gonna warp out. Oh no, they've actually warped off. What the fuck? Oh, I've I've told everybody to warp off now. As yeah, just take the fleet walk. We're warping off. I have no idea uh, where we're going. I can't remember where we're going. Oh, planet three. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna warp off and warp back to the station. I fleet warped everybody off. I got sli slightly scared there, but uh, they landed on top of us and then immediately ran away. So that's a bit strange. Uh, uh, well, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna land. Uh, we're gonna land uh, uh, on on this planet. Everybody can align back to the station. I haven't got my uh, key commands set up for these broadcasts yet. So, uh, so everybody can align back to the station, and we'll go back to the station.
Are they? Oh, well, we're warping off now. Uh, so we're warping back to the station. Uh, so I'm the anchor. We are literally only in logistics ship, so we can't really do anything. And I've also lost my only warrior. Uh, let me try and get it back. Nope, it's gone forever. Uh, so everybody can anchor back on me. I don't know where we are. Oh, people are getting shot, actually. Are these long-range confessors? What the fuck? Okay, everybody anchor on me. We're going to go back towards the station. I'm doing these on full speed. Uh, and if you're getting shot at, then you can just broadcast for reps, and this will be a, a good test. Is it? Everybody, uh, everybody just burn back to the uh, station undock. Uh, anchor on me. We'll try and save some people. Oh, look, it's Cyber King. Quite surprised they haven't tried starting blapping us or anything yet. Uh, obviously, very, very scared. Uh, yeah, we should. Where's the worm? Oh, that's no, a saber. Uh, you should W Queen Fleet and and you should warp to him or something, and we'll come towards you. Actually, the entire fleet can just align towards the hostiles. See where the hostiles are. We're just going to align towards there. And we're going to take the warp. I don't know where we're going to land. Oh my god, they ran away. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, everybody can align back to the station. Uh, obviously, uh, Tech 1 frigates is uh, too much for incentive mercenaries. They're a pro, pro alliance, PvP. <laughs> uh, is there any more questions? I think there is a. I think there is supposed to be a fleet starting soon. So, incentive incentive mercenaries are a, an irrelevant alliance that used to be semi relevant in the south four years ago, and, and then we killed them every year for the past four years, just like AAA. To answer your question, FC. Uh, the Tech 2 version or the Tech 1? The Scythe? Yeah, it's the Scythe. No, uh, and it's also a Gilla, not a Hilla. We can end that. It's not as a killer. Just, just like my uh, tsunami dream, you have to pronounce the T. You have to pronounce all the letters, mate. That's what. That's what. How how we do on the internet. Uh, any more questions? Do you have a special overlay for Lojanka? Uh, not really. You can't really change this. I don't think. Uh, uh, not that I'm aware of. This is just the default overlay. If you know something that I don't, then 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 brilliant. You can. Uh, you can show me, but no. Uh, I'd say that again, a T3 in a battleship. Oh yeah, the battleship. Oh, you just let him die. Unless he's tackling a high value target. But usually in those situations, he would be screaming, sc screaming everywhere. Uh, yeah, you should definitely pull all your drones. We've probably lost them all now. You can reconnect. If you go down to your little capacitor thing, and you can right-click on it, and then you can reconnect the lost drones, and then you get them back. And it's not really... Oh, here we go. I've got my little warrior back. But yeah, the, the reconnecting to lost drones is a nice little, uh, nice little thing. By right-clicking on the capacitor and clicking it down there, you can get your, get your drones back.
You can also be uh, pro elite, and you can uh, you can try and activate all your all your mods at the same time. You can turn turn things on and off uh, without having to uh, click on them. Uh, you just have to remember all the keybinds uh, for all your stuff, and you can turn them off, even though that's not actually working. Oh, I forgot all my keybinds. That's why I don't know how to turn it off. Oh, there we go. Uh, so yeah, sometimes uh, uh, being able to uh, remember some of the keybinds for being able to turn on like your uh, like your prop mod and stuff like that, uh, or your reps. Uh, usually, uh, it's just F1, F2, F3, and stuff like that. But uh, you Alt Alt F1 and Control F1 for your low slots uh, down here. Control F1, Control F2. As you slide them along the beam, can be uh, very very handy activating certain things. Uh, you can also shift click I think if I'm not aware and it turns on the overheat. There you go, shift click on a mod and it turns on the overheat and turns it back off again. It's another little tip trick. You have to be uncloaked for that to work though, so if you're going through a gate you can't pre-overload, you have to uncloak, overload and click on the mod and then un-overload and then turn it back off again. Oh, you meant overview? Um, uh, overview f special for logistics? No, I just have a normal overview for all my stuff. Uh, and then I have a wallpaper overview if I'm getting scared. I don't usually use any of these tabs, and I use this one maybe if I want to shoot people who are blue to me. Uh, but you're not supposed to do that, so no, I don't really have a special, uh, a special one. Uh, if you were like calling targets then yeah you would have uh, different columns so on this one we can uh, open different uh, different tab presets so we can uh, open for recons logistics dreads drones stuff like that we can change all the tabs to all the different stuff so if we just wanted to shoot at dictors because we don't like dictors for whatever reason we just click on that and it it'll just show an entire overview of dictors and i've probably lost all my overview because i haven't saved that uh, but now, uh, not for logistics, I don't have a special uh, one for that, but um, if I were FC and then I'd be able to change all the different tabs uh, depending on what I were doing. So I've got capital ships one here, and not safe one, warp out, and whatever this one is, basic travel. Uh, this is a, an Otaka shower uh, overview. I haven't got a link to his channel, uh, but you can get this. This isn't even the most up to date one because it doesn't have confessors on it. <laughs> so you should definitely get the most up to date one, but they, these are pretty cool with all the different colours and it changes uh, changes what uh, is shown on the screen as well. Uh, when you click on people in space it shows different things and you've got little colours and, and stuff like that, it's pretty cool. Uh, there we go, somebody's just uh, linked in fleet, that's a pretty really good overview. You can also donate to Otaka Shower for that if you really, if you really like it. Even if it's just a uh, 0.1 isk, it's, uh, every little helps. He's a very poor man. How do you put enemies and friendlies on the overview? Uh, then you would have to go into, if you really wanted to do that, then you could just go into your overview settings uh, and you would change the states. Uh, what is it? Uh, you, have to, you have to go into your settings and you have to put them basically all all on. Uh, I can't remember where it is now. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't really know how to do that. I just have this default thing in that usually does for me for most things. Because uh, I usually fly the same things on the same alts. I've loads of different alts. So. So I, I never really change my overviews uh, individually. Uh, any more questions? I have a look. Different tabs. Why bursts over bantams? Um, I have no real clue. Over, I don't know. Uh, you would have to talk to um, Horde leadership. Uh, you'd have to talk to Gobbins. I think he picked uh, bursts. 
or the Mimitar race in general. It's just so it, 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 uh, everybody doesn't have to really train different uh, different skills. Everybody can just train Mimitar for a gear, Mimitar cruiser, and you can go up the chain to get into bigger and better ships. Um, it, it, changing to a Bantam would need to have two racial frigate skills, and then you could change them to level five and stuff like that. And this wolf mole is getting uh, mullered. We're just going to go approach him and we're going to rip him because we like the little mauler. No, he's, he's docked. Uh, so, uh, I, 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 it's not really. A, 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 I think it's just to, so you don't have to train as many as many skills, really. Oh right, and yep. So he said you can go into your overview settings. Uh, you go into your normal settings, and there's a as a shortcut key for opening your overview. So then you can open it in station and uh, change all your tabs. It's a nice little thing. I didn't know about that. Yeah, it's in the Windows tab. You can change all your options when you dock. That's a good tip. How? Often can I should I overheat reps on high DPS fights? Uh, only when the FC, uh, only when the Logi FC calls for it, or um, really, um, it depends on how long you think the fight's going to last. If you think it's going to last a long time, you definitely don't want to be overloading your reps right at the beginning uh, when you are losing targets regardless of your reps, um, and then you'll come to a point where overloading can help but that all just comes from experience and flying them a lot of a, a long time i suppose it's, it's, it's a difficult question to answer it's very situational uh you could go for rome uh but there is supposed to be uh there is supposed to be a fleet soon so how do you sig tank a logic uh, usually does SIG tanking means you use a an afterburner fit rather than a macro warp drive fit uh, just to try and keep you uh, keep yourself low I mean, this, see the overview doesn't have uh, compressors on lot there we go uh, so we should just uh, broadcast for reps and we'll rep you you should uh, be in range of the lodges though somebody should anchor on me Uh, so yeah, they're just going to shoot us a bit, but they'll get bored, I'm sure. Um, uh, yeah, th yeah. If everybody just keeps their MWDs off, everybody keep your MWDs off. Uh, and what we're going to do is we are going to reduce our sig. Uh, so everybody, instead of uh, approaching me, if everybody orbits me at two and a half thousand. See, uh, to set that you can just right click and then orbit and then two and a half thousand and it will automatically orbit um, rather than uh, clicking on approach. Uh, and with the macro warp drive off, uh, that will mean that you are very, very small. So I think on this at the moment, I am currently, let's have a look, attributes. My SIG is 33 meters. So not the smallest you could get, but it's still pretty small. So at long range, uh, these confessors are going to, uh, even with the small guns, are still going to struggle to hit us. Um, but yeah, it, it, SIG tanking is usually just AB fit, um, which is why uh, there was that Aeneas I showed earlier, and the Aeneas is dual prop, it has MWD and AB, so you can get into position with the MWD, and then change back to an AB, and then it reduces your SIG, and then it makes it harder for people to hit you. Uh, so these confessors have come close, so everybody can just uh, orbit on me. Uh, we're going to put your MWDs on, uh, one cycle MWD, we're going to approach the target. And you should definitely broadcast. And we've lost somebody already. And so am I. I'm down FC, somebody else will have to take over. This 
this is where we, we lose all all the frigates. It's fine. I've got I've got spares. You should you should definitely burn at them at full speed with your MWDs on. <laughs> That's what you should definitely do. Uh, now everybody just approach the dock. Everybody just approach the dock. And we'll just dock up. Uh, that, that, that's uh, one of the problems we have in a logistics anchor is as soon as your logistic anchor dies if you haven't gotten pre-set up especially in a situation like that where you are losing logistic ships very very quickly uh, it becomes very very chaotic so in a, in a slightly larger fight uh, you might have one or two or three different logistics anchors uh, just like the main FC anchors you might have two or three of those as well so then if somebody dies the next person can just take over and it all just no uh, the fleet doesn't go to shit basically yeah you could just approach and dock and I, I can actually give you more ships because I've still got some left so if you need a new ship you can just uh, contract uh, open a trade with me and I'll give you a new ship I'm gonna get into my scimitar so I don't die again trades for me and I'll give you more ships. Is there any more questions about logistics things? <laughs> I think it was uh, Mendoza was supposed to be doing a, a fleet sometime around now. Um, I'm sure it'll be on and they can uh, whelp you gloriously. You're supposed to be fighting test I think. Uh, yeah, people in Tawars could get in Tawars and we can undock and we could go and black the things. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tawars uh, can undock. Tawars can undock. Hey, everybody align, align to the enemies, align to the reds, align to the reds, everybody on dock, align to the reds. Yeah, they're at range. Oh no, they're warping in. Would he take the fleet warp? Mm, a little bit too far. A little bit too far. Uh, everybody burn towards him. Uh, we're going to burn towards him. We're going to just fuck it and leave right into him. Oh, they've walked away again. <sighs> they, they ran away. Everybody line planet 4. Everybody line planet 4. Ready to take the warp? <laughs> if you're watching the stream, you can tell I'm I'm not uh, usually uh, in a fleet command position where I uh, fleet warp all the time, all the time. So I haven't got any. Uh, I have no idea where the fleet warp button is. Probably warped everybody to their certain death. Oh no. I'm going to line back to the station. No. Would you set the fleet warp?
What's the range on the Tar Wars? Oh, okay, right, yeah, your long range fit, yeah. Oh, they're miles away. Hero Kestrel, everybody can anchor on me, everybody can anchor on me. I'm gonna burn towards them a bit. If you've got MWDs and prop mods and stuff, you can turn them all on. I've got no bookmarks for this system whatsoever, so... We're gonna save this Kestrel though, because he uh, deserves to live. Yep, yeah, I know. I'm just going to slow down a little bit because uh, I'm a lot faster than all you lot. Oh no, the Atron's out of range. We need to save the Atron. Oh, he's walked off. Uh, I, I'm not in your corp, so I can't walk to it. If uh, if some hordes people uh, hold warp to it, everybody else can warp onto them. Cause I can't see your bookmark, so. Everybody line towards the hostiles then, if uh, everybody else is warping towards bookmark. Oh, there we go. Oh no, they've walked towards, closer to us, yeah, they landed close to us, we're going to burn towards them. I'm going to save the stabber, because he's probably going to die. Too close. Uh, no, do, we'll just wait here because they're uh, most certainly going to come back. So we're going to go up a little bit, and hopefully they will land close to us. They've probably got eyes on this station now, cloaky behinds. You can't really uh, FC from a logistic ship, though. Uh, that's another thing that you can't do. It's uh, a top tip. You definitely can't uh, anchor. Uh, you can't FC from a logistic ship. It doesn't work. Yep. As uh, so yeah, if you if you're watching the stream, uh, as you saw, I just locked that tower up, and I uh, I've got two groupings, uh, so I activated one and then the other, and then turned them both off individually. But only needed one cycle from each group. So. Um, not wasting cap. No, oh, they've not come back. Well, we're just gonna stroll towards.
Mm, they're not that far away. We're uh, near the SV5 gate. We're just going to stroll uh, back towards the uh, station though. And somebody more competent and not in an uh, not in a lodging ship can uh, sort of semi FC this. But yeah, if there is any more questions about logistics, as I know more about logistics than FC in. I did like talk for like an hour and 15 minutes about like a pretty simple subject. Uh, how do I talk in mumble only with the logistics? Uh, so you would be in a sub channel on, on mumble. Uh, let me just pull mumble across. So yeah, if you're on Mumble, you have uh, sub channels. You were denied move privileges in main. You'd have uh, sub channels uh, here, uh, sub one, sub two, sub three, four, sub four. So usually, uh, logistics ships would be in the first sub, uh, and you would have a. Uh, 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 um, um, got the words for it now uh, a whisper to channel so you can go into uh, into your configure go into settings and then you can go into shortcuts uh, so here we've got our main push to talk uh, which is my middle mouse button here uh, and then I've got this whisper and shout that's set to current uh, data current which means it'll broadcast, it'll whisper to whatever channel I'm in, but nothing else. And I've got that on a on a different key, on my delete key, uh, which is actually my side mouse button, one of my side mouse buttons. Uh, so I can, so that's how you would set it up. So y you would have it set up like this for whispering to different uh, for your channel. You can do crazy things. You can have whisper to certain channels. So if you're like in a if you like you could talk to like a command channel or channel you're an raise FC, a you number could whisper one. to one one or something like that. You could do crazy stuff like that. But usually you just have bus to talk for the main and then a whisper to the current channel on a different key and that's how you do that one. You could have a cool skin that we've got on here, the Pandemic Legion logo. It's pretty cool. There we go. Are all those sound settings for Eve tablets? Uh, yeah, they're all Eve clients, I think. I'm uh, multiboxing uh, 30 accounts at the moment, and these are all my accounts. <laughs> no. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, I, I've had 30 accounts probably open and shut the past like two or three hours though, so uh, it's probably just, it's probably not turned them off, it's just bugged. I think there's only one that's got sound on it. Uh, only 30, yeah, only 30. I did have 12 on earlier because I had all my accounts. I, I had 12 on because I had. No, I'm getting disappointed. I had uh, all, all I had like six on TQ and six on the test server as well. So it's probably just because I kept logging in and off the test server. It's probably created a new one for each one. What are the specs of my comp? That though, that's the spec of my comp. It's not. Mega, I don't suppose, but it does all right. Six core for six clients. That's mainly why I got it. Uh, I can uh, max my core out on my memory controller. Uh, we're running like six Eve clients, but I don't run out of memory. And I run water cooling. I'm I'm pretty happy with the water cooling that I've got at the moment. It's pretty good. 
Where can I get that mumble skin? It's sick. Uh, it is sick. Uh, I will post a link somewhere in. I will. I will host it, and I will post it in the whole channel. Any more questions? If not, um, we'll just call it a day.